Welcome to Euro PCR 2023. Uh, at the outset, I'll introduce myself. I am Dr. Rajneesh Kapoor, Vice Chairman Interventional Cardiology at Medanta, the Medicity, New Delhi, India. And we are here for a special session, special video session on ultra thin strut stent technology. And with me, uh, we have an elite panel joining me, uh, Dr. Suhas Hardas, who is a very versatile interventional cardiologist from Pune, India, and Dr. Anupam Jena. So he comes from Bhuvaneshwar, uh, which is a capital of Odisha in India. He's again a very astute interventional cardiologist from Bhuvaneshwar. So welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So as you know, we are uh, here to talk about and discuss in detail about the ultra thin strut stent technology. If I'll just uh, go a little bit back, we know stents we have been using for decades. And we know that initially it was bare metal stents and then the drug eluting stents came into picture which really uh, you know, made the outcomes best in terms of PCI. But then what next? What is the next level where we are actually looking at that how we can further improve the outcomes in coronary artery disease patients once we are uh, planning PCI in such patients? So we know until now, whatever drug eluting stents we have, uh, they are mostly the strut thickness is 90 microns or 95 microns. So there is a new generation of stents which are uh, now available for a practice which are much less uh, strut thickness. So Dr. Anupam, my first question to you, when do we really call that stents have a ultra strut thin? Thank you, sir. That's a wonderful question. Because uh, I think uh, as you have already summarized, the uh, ultra, th ultra thin struts are those struts thickness is less than 70 micron. Okay, so mostly they are 90 microns, but yeah. ends where the strut thickness is less than 70, we call them as a ultra, ultra thin, thin, ultra strut, uh, thin strut stents. Yeah. So uh, my next question to you, Dr. Suhas. Once we are so successfully doing PCIs with available stents, which are which have a strut thickness of 90 microns, why do we really require these thin struts stents? That's a nice question. Basically, I think all of us were, must agree that we have seen a revolution in this stent technology. The way PCI has advanced for the last 35 years that we have seen. Initially, we used to have stents which used to be crimped on balloons and the strut thickness was as high as 170 microns. Now, over a period of time, we realized that our biggest enemy was restenosis. Our biggest enemy was stent thrombosis, of course. We improved a lot on the antiplatelet area, thereby reducing stent thrombosis to a great extent. But we still had a lot of restenosis. And when we analyzed the causes, we realized that it was probably the polymer, it was probably the stent platform, it was probably other things which were responsible for all these mace. And then in 2001, when Castrati wrote his first paper where he compared two bare metal stents with different strut thicknesses and realized that it was the thin stent strut which was responsible for better mace and reduced um, uh, TLR and uh, TVF. And then we started focusing more on strut thickness and that area. So subsequently, I think there have been a uh, lot of articles, lot of research on strut thickness, and now we know that we have ultra thin struts, and I'm very proud to say that an Indian company is manufacturing that. So uh, therefore, as you asked me, this was the need for advancement, for betterment of uh, stent technology to have better thickness of the stent struts. So, so you mean to say that the previous stents which are available with us, the ultra thin struts may work even better in terms of the outcomes. So it may decrease instant restenosis, it may decrease target uh, vessel failures. So I think that is the crux of uh, the, the discussion which we are having? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So my next question to you, Dr. Anupam is, 
so once we have ultra strut uh, ultra thin strut stents which are the specific lesions or patient subsets which you are looking that should be more beneficial by using these stents yeah as we have seen that especially in the indian context where the prevalence of diabetes is especially very high now india is the diabetic capital of the world in a way so what we have seen is that majority of our patients are young they have diffuse disease they have complex anatomy tortuous vessels sometimes calcified vessels and multivessel coronary artery disease so in thus in those cases especially where we are looking at a long term result if a patient gets a stent at the age of 50 then he has to live for maybe next 30 years so there we are looking for a stent which has good uh, very less uh, target lesion failure or very less stent failure so that the efficacy no, that is, is there high. that is there i am asking where there is a specific advantage of these stents to me you know in my practice which i have uh, experienced that there are certain subsets where the vessels are highly tortuous oh yes tortuous fibrotic, fibrotic at the bends yes, yes yes where sometimes it becomes very difficult to deliver the normal strut thickness stents which are 90 microns and i have experienced it in many cases they are using these more conformable or more maneuverable stents because once we decrease the strut thickness yes. they become more maneuverable very maneuverable deliverability improves yes so then it is better to use these stents in those areas yes so this is very clear and uh, i have personally have a very good experience by using these uh, small uh, these thin strut uh, stents in in, in these subsets specifically yeah so dr suhas tell me so now these problems can be encountered in very calcified lesions in yes. fibrotic lesions i have i have uh, given a gist of that for more tortuous vessels it is a great uh, thinking sure. to use these stents but sure. what could be the other subsets i think as you uh, both of you pointed out this is very specific to the indian subset because india has the highest population of diabetic patients moreover i think the overall burden of atherosclerosis is so humongous in our country that we see a lot of patients below the age of 50 years and then you have to think of lifetime management of the patient there's a lot of disease tortuosity calcification smaller vessels and especially for those who have worked overseas they will agree completely that the vessel diameters there are much larger and therefore it is more relevant in our country to have a stent which has very thin struts which are very conformable which are very very deliverable flexible and preserves the side branches that's good and also takes care of a lot of inflammation that is set in because of thick struts yeah so my next uh, level of discussion is now it is also said that these thin strut stents the endothelial coverage uh, over the stents happen much earlier yes there is one study which showed that 91% of the uh, stent struts get fully covered by uh, endothelium in first one or two months with these specifically yes. these thin struts so would that be of advantage in a subset who has a high bleeding risk definitely sir because as we have seen that uh, the patients who have high thrombotic risk also have a high bleeding risk so in this subset of patients shortening the dual antiplatelet duration definitely will give us lot of advantage so the ultra thin strut stents have advantage like uh, less vessel injury uh, rapid endothelialization and preservation of the native anatomy more or less preservation of the native anatomy and preservation of the uh, branches so that's why shorter dual, dual antiplatelet will have intrinsic benefit so this is another potential benefit with these thin uh, strut stents another thing which comes to my mind is that you know uh, there are further more subsets like instant restenotic subsets sure. where potentially uh, you know at times we have to deliver another stent to open up a blockage yeah. so if we uh, go go with the 
normal strut thickness, which is 90 microns, we are actually giving more metal sure. in the vessel. So probably that subset is also a very potential subset where we can actually use these kind of stands for a better outcome of these, these patients. Sure, I agree totally. So now if we talk of our data with these thin uh, strut stands, I think the data is also gradually uh, becoming more and more. The tail end study was there where supraflex screws. Now supraflex screws is one uh, thin strut stent which is indigenously developed in India and manufactured in India. So that's a proud moment for all, all of all Indians. So where it was tested against zines and the results were absolutely fine, the statistically non-significant non-inferiority study. So there are further data accumulating with high bleeding risk groups yeah. And uh, whereby it is, it will be clearly mentioned that if we, even if we stop the antiplatelets at two months' time, I think it will be much safer. So further, if you, if we, if we want to talk of data, do you want to add something to this, Dr. Swas? In fact, uh, <clears throat> there is a lot to be talked about the data. There are OCT studies, there are autopsy studies, and some of the autopsy studies have been on animals, and some of them have been on humans, but. Uh, to name a good autopsy study that was carried out on um, porcine uh, uh, model was conducted by Dr. Virmani and they looked at uh, third day uh, presence of thrombus and third day presence of fibrin which was very very high in strut thicknesses more than 100. Oh. They were remarkably lesser OCT data, if you talk about, then you know that there is an OCT study which talks about endothelialization of 95% of the stent struts by the end of three weeks. Yes. Yeah. In, yes. Uh, in thin strut. Yeah. Yes. Then if you have a thicker strut, the endothelialization occurs only in up to 74% of uh, uh, stent struts. Yeah. So there clearly is a data, OCT data, animal data, um, uh, to suggest that thin struts are definitely less um, injurious, irritant, injurious, less injurious, yeah. lesser attracting the thrombogenic material and fibrin, and probably lesser restenosis. I agree. So I would also like to mention about a tuxedo study which is going on in India. It's yes. an Indian study for all diabetic subsets with triple vessel disease and double vessel disease. I'm a participant in that. I have enrolled many patients in that. So whereby supraflex screws is being tested against zines, it's a blinded study, and we are looking at results in terms of safety and efficacy in different subsets. So that would be a very good data once it comes, uh, once the study is completed and data is announced. So we're looking forward to the results. So overall, it seems the gist of the discussion is that there is a high need of thin strut stents uh, in the present era which may work better or which is probably working better than the previously existing stands in many subsets in select group of patients. And potentially it is also leading to decreased TLR, decreased uh, MI uh, in, the, in, in all, all these subsets. So uh, with uh, this final conclusion, I think uh, it makes sense. Can, to, I, can I make one yeah, remark? Yeah, please. I think uh, when the ultra-thin strut technology uh, came in vogue, there was a lot of discussion about the radial strength. Yes. And um, I think um, one of you should address about what is your take on reduction. So I, was, I was going to ask this. So once we decrease the strut thickness, it is anticipated that radial strength would go down. So whether this is happening in this specific subset, is supraflex screws or other other uh, stents yes, available? That's an excellent question, sir. I think it's a very intelligent engineering, uh, actually, at uh, because uh, as we have seen that the over expansion limit of around one to one point five millimeter, and uh, at the higher pressures, at the higher diameters, there is a circularization of the crests and the crowns. So the radial strength is in fact 17, 15 to 20 percent higher when we go for an over expansion of this strength. So this, I mean, uh, there is no worries that there is a problem with radial strength. In fact, it uh, goes up. Absolutely, and that was the reason why when we invented better stents, we uh, went from stainless steel to cobalt chromium or platinum uh, chromium. 
That's because there is a 40 to 60 percent uh, improvement, in fact, in the radial strength. There's only one thing that in very large vessels, there is a possibility that metal to vessel surface area, that ratio, becomes an issue. So drug elution can become a little challenge, but I think that is being addressed. And I'm very sure even in large uh, vessels, uh, ultra thin stents are working extremely well, especially because their expansile capacity is really good. Okay, so I think the conclusion which we can draw that ultra thin struts, uh, stents which are available, specifically I know Supraflex screws is that stent which is available in India and all over. So it's a very good new technology which is paving the way further to improve the outcomes in PCI patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. In terms of decreasing TLR, in terms of decreasing the late stent thrombosis because it, it gets best covered by endothelium so early, in high blood risk, uh, high bleeding risk patients where we can actually withdraw antiplatelets much earlier, and in instant restenotic lesions and in highly tortuous vessels. So with this, I think the stage is set to take this final call that these are very good stents and we require such innovations in technology to further keep improving with the outcomes in PCI patients. So thank you very much. Dr. Swaz, it, it was wonderful to have you, thank Dr. You. Jina. Thank it you. was really thank fabulous. You, thank you. So I think this discussion will create better awareness in all interventional cardiologists' mind so that we can keep using the more innovative technology to give best outcomes to our patients. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.